Hi, my name is Bruce McKenzie and I'm here to talk to you about the future of financial reporting in South Africa. Now with the new Companies Act in force and the end of SA gap on the horizon, many companies in South Africa are going to need to make some choices around what financial reporting framework they use. In addition, with the end of SA gap coming into force from December this year, you're going to need to make those decisions sooner rather than leaving it into next year. Now there are various financial reporting frameworks you can report under. To start off with, there's full IFRS. Secondly, we have the IFRS for SMEs, and then we've also heard a lot about microgap. Well, today I'm hoping we can clear up what we believe microentities should be using. Let's start by looking at full IFRS. Now, full IFRS is not for everyone. Yes, it is the globally accepted gold standard in financial reporting, but it is also complex. And with all the changes coming down the line, it is going to require companies to spend a little bit more time and probably money getting to grips with all these new requirements. Now, if you're a listed company, you have to use full IFRS. If not, you need to have some considerations around whether this is the right framework for you. For example, are you planning on listing in the future? Do you plan to sell out to a listed group? Or do you have external parties requiring you to use full IFRS? If this is the case, then clearly full IFRS is the standard for you to use. Remember, of course, as I mentioned, there are changes coming down the line. And if you look at the three that they're working on, financial instruments, leases, and revenue recognition, those three are going to impact almost every company reporting under IFRS. So there is going to be quite a lot of change in the future. The second one is the IFRS for SME standard. Now to apply this standard, you need to be an entity that has no public accountability and prepares general purpose financial statements. If you're currently using SA Gap, our suggestion is that you should probably be moving to the IFRS for SME standard. Why? Well, as opposed to full IFRS, this standard is easier. To start off with, there's a lot less disclosure. Secondly, there's a lot less fair value. And where you are required to fair value, there's a cost-benefit exemption in many cases. And lastly, there's a lot less change than there is under full IFRS. I mean, if you take a look at the SME standard, it was issued in 2009, and we haven't seen a change since then. In fact, we're only expecting a full revision of it to happen and be effective probably around 2015. So it's been a long period of no change. In addition, the IFRS for SME standard is a recognized framework, which means you can have an audit or an independent review done on a set of accounts under that framework. Now, lastly, let's take a look at the old micro entities. Generally, these are entities below 100 points in terms of the Companies Act regulations where there is no prescribed framework. To start off with, there is not going to be a prescribed framework for these entities. Now, the feedback we've received is that many companies are looking for some guidance as to what they should be applying or preparing their accounts under. Our suggestion, use the IFRS for SME standard, but with a bit of a twist. SIC has prepared a guide called Applying IFRS for SMEs to Micro-Entities. What this guide has done is taken the IFRS for SME standard and stripped out all the sections that are not applicable to micro-entities. For example, hedge accounting. So the idea there is that you've got a standard that should be applicable to around 90% of micros without all the complexity that really doesn't apply in that market. Now the advantages to this approach, to start off with, it's based on the IFRS for SME standard. So if you are below 100 points and you start extending above that, you can continue to use the same basis of preparation. Secondly, is a recognized basis of preparation for your accounts. So your accounts will state that you have complied with the IFRS for SMEs framework. Thirdly, like the full IFRS for SMEs framework, you can have an audit opinion done on it or an independent review. And lastly, there are various software tools and other tools available to help you in applying this. I'll take a look at some of those later. Now, how do you ensure that you're up to date with all of these frameworks or how do you implement these frameworks if you're moving to a different one? Well, Psych has responded with various training initiatives and tools to help you in each of these tiers. Firstly, full IFRS. Psych has various training courses and seminars that run throughout the year. These include the annual accounting update, run in the last quarter every year, and the IFRS Back to Basics courses, which are two-day courses running every year looking at the existing standards. Also remember that there's the Psych certificate in IFRS if you're looking for a very detailed understanding of how to apply IFRS. If you're looking for a product for some self-learning, Psyca also has an e-learning product called Fundamentals, which is available via the Psyca website. Secondly, for the IFRS for SMEs. Psyca will be running a number of implementation seminars in August this year. Remember, if you are moving from SA Gap to the IFRS for SMEs, we'd strongly suggest you attend these because these will focus on the move to the IFRS for SME standard and the requirements therein. In addition, if you're looking for some sort of publication, Psyca has a textbook called Applying IFRS for SMEs, which you can get from the Psyca website. 
Now lastly, what about the micros? Well, as I mentioned, Saika has developed a guide on applying the IFRS for SMEs in a micro environment. And they'll be running half day seminars on how to apply this for micro entities in September, October this year. Now they've also developed an electronic toolkit on the applying IFRS for SMEs in a micro environment. This toolkit includes an applicability checklist, an electronic detailed application guide, model annual financial statements prepared on caseware, and a disclosure checklist. So it's a very comprehensive toolkit which you can get from the Psyker website or from Psyker themselves that'll help you in applying the micro entity standard as we see it. Now for more information on any of these, you can visit the Psyker website or contact your local Psyker office. I hope this has been useful in helping you determine which framework best works for you. Take care.